Hey YouTube, in this video we're going to be discussing a important topic that's come up recently regarding Intel CPUs. This is going to be discussing the recent reports of stability with games crashing and applications crashing to desktop with the 13th gen and the 14th gen, especially the 14th gen. Back when I first built the 13900K desktop PC, back in 2022, this was like October when this platform first launched to market, uh, I did a side-by-side -side comparison video, link in the description up here, it'll, the card will be there. The At the time, I noticed that the there's risks associated with running it out of the box with this so-called unlimited power mode because of the temperatures that the processor was reaching, and it was also thermal throttling. And at the time, I stated that multi-thread workloads could severely long-term damage the processor. So now that these processors have kind of been out in the wild for a while, especially the 13th gen processors, depending on how you've been using it and how they've been cooled, these problems could start manifesting. Now the, the 14th gen is basically an overclock 13th gen. They're both Raptor Cove. They're the exact same silicon. So those are more prone to being unstable if there's issues with power delivery and that sort of thing with the components, if the motherboard's sketchy, etc. But the point that we're making is we need to establish a baseline to show what happens. So obviously we're going to lose performance. And we're going to show that here. So this is the 1300K at stock unlimited power mode. Right here you can see the PL1. That is the base power level. And power level 2, that's the max turbo power. Uh, one thing to note is that the base stock her Intel specification is supposed to be 125 watts, but Gigabyte's motherboard has set it to 4,095 watts. Likewise, power level 2, or power limit 2, should be 253 watts for this processor, but they, again, it's 4,000. So this is what they mean by unlimited power, and I've already talked about this previously. If you guys have watched my live streams, I've already done multiple discussions on this specific topic over a year ago at this point. But that's besides the point. So let's get a baseline using Cinebench to get us our temperatures. So we're going to look at the... Pay attention to the packet temperature. Pay attention to the package power. So this one here. See what this ends up doing. And then also up here, core thermal throttling and critical temperature power level. So let's see what happens when we run Cinebench with this stock out-of-box configuration. Keep in mind, this is stock. There you go, 101 Celsius. And you can see it went up to 300, about 300 watts right there. That's like 299. And it's still doing the run. And this is just going to be a single Cinebench run. And there you go. So there's the score. So 38,622. That's the stock. But this is probably related to the problem that people are having with crashes and stability because I would wager that the current draw is too much the over time the processor is probably just going to wear out more quickly than processors from older generations because it's being pushed so hard so let's get into the BIOS now and apply of Intel's official power limit specifications and see what that does to our PL1 and PL2, and then see how that affects temperatures, and see how that affects our performance, because ultimately when you power limit, you're going to lose performance. There's no way around that. Okay, so once you're in the BIOS, now this this might depend on your brand of motherboard, but in this case we're using a Z790 Aorus Master from Gigabyte. You're going to want to find the power limit toggle. And that's usually going to be under advanced CPU settings. It might be under the tweaker or the overclocker settings or somewhere in there, depending on what it's called in the other brands. So under advanced CPU settings, we're going to look for the power limits, which will be toward the bottom here. So right here, turbo power limits. So the default is auto. You can see right there. We're going to hit this. And now, depending on the motherboard, you might have different settings in here, different presets. Now... This first one here is Intel Poor. Intel Poor stands for Intel Power On Reset. Power On Reset is an Intel spec, but the problem is, depending on the motherboard manufacturer, they might not actually follow the spec. In this scenario, Gigabyte does not follow the spec. 
and I'll show you guys that here. I'm going to set this to Intel Power on Reset. We're going to F10 and go back into Windows, and we're going to show what happens when we select Power on Reset. Okay, once we're back in Windows, you can see now here, Power Level 1, or Power Limit 1, is now 253 watts, and Power Limit 2 is also 253 watts. With Gigabyte's Intel Poor preset, it has basically made PL1 equal PL2, which is technically not Intel spec. So this is still not Intel spec. So which tells you that I'm going to have to manually set Intel specs for this motherboard. But let's see what happens now when we're using this. Let's see what happens to the temperatures and if we're going to thermal throttle. So pay attention to that. Basically pay attention to anything that turns red. So let's go ahead and run that now and see what happens. And notice that it's not... Okay, it's still getting hot. It gets up to 95. It's running at 95. But notice now the power. Okay, it is still getting to... Yeah. It's starting to... Power limit exceeded. It's going yes. Thermal throttling is happening. So it's still running into the problem with potential reliability issues. As far as I'm concerned. It's still overheating. It's still, you know, it's exceeding the power limit, etc. And the reason why it's complaining about that is probably because the PL1 is too high. So we're still overheating at 100 Celsius. Although notice that it took longer. We had to go much further into the Cinebench run. So this could be a happy medium if you're dependent on your risk tolerance level. It's technically out of spec because PL1 is not supposed to be 253. It's supposed to be 125. But look at the Cinebench score. So we lost points. In our first default stock run, we scored over 38,000. I think it was 38,600 something. Now we're scoring 37,800. So we've lost almost 1,000 points by doing this. Before we go into the BIOS, I do want to show you guys what Intel's official specifications are, just so I can prove my point here. So right here, on this is on Intel's official website for the product page for the 1300K, and you can do the same for any of the other Raptor Cove processors. Processor base power. This is PL1. If you mouse over this question mark, it literally says the time average power dissipation of the processor is validated to not exceed during manufacturing, blah, blah, blah. This is basically PL1. Then we and notice it says 125 watts. Now we have maximum turbo power. This is PL2. If we click on this, now this is the short duration sustain. And this one's 253. So that right there is the proof that even with the motherboard's preset for Intel specifications, the, the motherboard's applying the wrong value for PL1, hence why we're running into this overheating and it's using too much power and it's generating too much heat. So now let's go into the BIOS and set the Intel official specifications. Okay, so once again, back in the BIOS we go, and we want to go into Advanced CPU Settings, and we want to go and find our Turbo Power Limits. So we're going to change this from Intel Poor, or whatever it may say on your motherboard, to Enabled. And that once enabled, now we can manually set PL1 and PL2. And for those that have watched my channel for a long time now, you probably already have seen this content, because I've done this video probably more than a year ago at this point we've already talked about this topic but because now it's starting to circulate in the public with more widespread visibility with a lot of news outlets covering this now we're going to redo the whole video essentially so to specify intel official specifications you're going you're going to go under package power limit one which is pl1 and it says tdp in mine it's watts but yours might be in milliwatts or something so you have to keep in mind the units you can always check the drop down to see it says that we're in watts, so I'm going to manually type 125 and hit enter. That is 125 watts. That is the Intel official spec. Now I want to go to package power limit 2. This is the turbo one, and I'm going to set this one to 253. So now I have manually set Intel's official specification. So now it's going to run as though it were a pre-build from Dell or an Office PC from HP or Lenovo. So that's the changes that we're going to make. That's all you need to do. 
Now we're going to go back into Windows and see what are the effects of running it at the official specifications. Okay, now we can see in here that PL1 is correctly set to 125, and PL2 is still 253, and this now matches Intel's official spec. So now we're going to run this and see what happens. Pay attention again to thermal throttling and the temperatures and then the power draw, which is this one right here. So now let's see. So now we can see it does turbo up to 253, but the temperatures, it did, it did spike up to 90, but at that point it leveled off. To 125 pl1 took over the base power took over because of the duration of the full load and now we're not overheating anymore and there you go that's the results of intel official spec so one thing that i'll point out obviously we're not thermal throttling anymore so intel specs hold true you can use an air cooler like a noctua nhd 15 but please don't use something like this. Don't use an Intel stock cooler. Uh, that's another way to kill your CPU fast if you're running something like an i9. Regardless of whether you're power limiting it or not, you're just going to thermal throttle it. Uh, but right here, you can see we have lost a lot of performance. Our multi score is now 32,512. I mean, we're, we've lost about 16% performance by running it at Intel's base spec. At this power level, it no longer thermal throttles, but it's also performing worse than the Zen 4 CPUs now because AMD 7950X and even the 7950X 3D performs better than this because the Cinebench scores for like a 7950X 3D is like 35 something thousand. The 7950X in productivity is like 37, 36,000, 37,000, somewhere in there. So now this processor is technically quite a bit weaker than the competition by doing this. But this ensures that it runs within spec and now it behaves a lot better as you guys can see from the tests that we've shown here. So if you like this sort of content, uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel. It does help me out. It does motivate me to keep making these type of useful videos that I feel like the general public can benefit from. Anyone in the PC DIY space that's running into problems with instability, you definitely probably want to try this out. And we do live streams every Thursday. I answer viewer questions on tech-related topics like this. So if you want to check that out, get subscribed and hit that bell notification icon so you know when I go live or when I upload a new video. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.